Hey guys, this is Pete from French Time Coaching and welcome to my ultimate guide to the lag and snap forehand. Now the reason I'm making this video is there's all kinds of information on this that can be confusing quite frankly. So if you've been somebody who's not only struggled to do the lag and snap, snap but actually understand what it is, this video is for you. Let's get started. So here's what we're going to cover in today's video. First of all, we're going to go over what exactly is the lag and snap. Number two, I'm going to go through some advice, common advice you've heard on the internet about the lag and snap and what I agree with and what I disagree with and, and how it will work for you. And then finally, I'm going to give you a 3x power lag and snap forehand drill that if you've never felt it before, if you don't know how to do the lag and snap, you've tried it, this drill is going to work. So make sure you stick to the end. Plus I've got even more bonus training on a modern tennis forehand if you can uh, stick around to the end. So make sure that if you watch this video, you like it, you comment on it with any questions and subscribe. So there's two parts to the lag and snap forehand. There's the lag and there's the snap. So first of all, before we even worry about the snap, let's talk about well, what, what are people meaning when they say lag? And, and so if you were to watch a lot of the pros today, you're gonna notice this, especially there's so many great videos out there, uh, which I recommend you watch, of high definition practice sessions with the pros and you can really see players like Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer, all your favorite players get into a lag position. And so what they're doing is they're getting set and they're right here. They have their racket out to their dominant side. So I'm a lefty, so I'm out here to the left side. And then just, as they, just before they go forward, they drop back into the slot that people will call the lag position. as it comes from here. Again. So now that you know what the lag is and what it looks like, it's like, well, why, why do it? What is it doing for you that you want to be able to do this? It's doing several things for you. The first one is many tennis coaches will talk about when you're getting ready to hit a forehand serve, lots of your shots, that you get into something called a pre-stretch position or a unit turn. And that's where you are loading up the court. So if I'm getting ready to hit a forehand, just by holding on to the racket here and holding it out, the, the, the pros, teaching pros are teaching more and more to hold it out to your dominant side, not taking big back swings. And by doing this, I'm loading up the court. Now, when I drop back, into a lag position and start to really build that momentum forward, it starts to really help me build momentum into the shot, build a lot of racketed speed in a short amount of time because we have a shorter runway and that's going to bring a lot of power. And also you'll notice when I'm getting into my, if you watch the pros, when they're getting into their lag position, this has a lot to do with the grip that you're using, which I'll get into later, you're gonna notice that the strings are also facing the ground. So that's going to enable you to add a lot more top spin to the ball. So you're gonna be accelerating adding more spin, so that's gonna be able to give you a nice combination of spin and power when you get ready to hit your forehand.
The lag also really helps you build in muscle memory to have an excellent kinetic chain. If you've ever heard of the kinetic chain, what it is, is it's the concept that power builds from the ground up. So if you're looking at me right now, and you can see my feet here, I am using ground force. That's why you see the pros, and that's why I've heard many of your coaches say, you know, get, get down, bend your knees, and what you're doing by that is you're using ground force, and then you're shooting up into the ball. And so a lag is also another way of saying, hey, that's the last part that's gonna go, because the kinetic chain will work to where it's working up through your body, and then the last part, is the racket head, the energy is coming from your legs and it's coming up through the racket face. Well, on a forehand, it's the same thing where I'm building everything up, I'm building all the momentum, I'm building the energy through my body and then when I drop into this lag position, that's preparing me to then shoot the energy through my arm into the racket, which is then building the racket head speed into the ball. So that's another great benefit of a lag. That's why we want to learn how to do it. We're here, we build it through the legs, pop up through the legs, hitting that ball, and we're adding more power and spin to our forehand. So now that we have the idea of, of what the lag is and what it does, now we got to talk about the snap. And this is where I think a lot of people get confused or start to play really sloppy tennis because the snap, most people think of it as a snap in the wrist. And if you're getting this wrong, this is where you can really not only hit bad shots, but get hurt. And I want you to start to think about your snap as your release, okay? And I'm gonna go through, uh, very important, how we release this snap. So I want you to get kind of the wrist idea, the idea of, of snapping your wrist out of your head right now. And just think about releasing the racket head, and the racket head has to come forward through the shot before we can even start to think about adding the wrist, which I'm going to show you how to do later in this video. But that's basically what the snap is. It's, it's building all this momentum. You see, we got the pre-stretch, so we're loading the core. We come down here, we lay back our wrist into a lag position, and then we release, and that release is the snapping part. And the pros, I don't think, are thinking about snapping the wrist, but they certainly are thinking about once they get here, they kind of make that decision when they get into that wrist lag. I mean, they're seeing the ball, they're making the decision usually before they even hit the ball, but that's like the kind of final subconscious decision because they're not thinking about it as far as how much acceleration, how much spin, how much pace are they putting on the ball, what are they going to release into the shot, and that's their snap. So that's right after the lag. I hear lag, release, lag, release, and you can see they're putting a nice amount of spin and power into the ball with that release. Now when we release, it's important that we're not using a lot of wrist into the re release, especially before we hit, because we're releasing and snapping before we hit, hopefully you can see just by this motion, we'll even put in slow motion, that this is not gonna be a very good tennis shot. The ball is not gonna go very far. And uh, I think a lot of people who watch TV think that the pros are just using a tremendous amount of wrist through the hitting zone. And the wrist part is actually gonna be coming after the hitting zone, after they've extended. So that's the big danger as far as the snap. If you misinterpret a snap to like snap your wrist, especially if you're snapping this way, okay, if you're moving this way through your shot, which I've seen a lot of club players do, this is where you're going to start to develop wrist injuries and tennis elbow. It's going to travel up through. So that's what you don't want to be doing when you're thinking about snapping your lag and snap forehand. So what I want you to start to think about when you're going to snap into the ball, when you're going to release 
let's change the word out snap and put it into release. When you're going to release your racket head towards the ball, I want you to think about it as a set it and forget it position. Basically, and you'll notice a lot of pros will stand like this in a ray position. When I'm like this, I pretty much built in the lag and snap. It's, it's Now it becomes almost my job to mess it up because I'm here and it's going to promote that when I turn, I'm in a nice unit turn, and then when I'm drop, I'm still in the same position. And then as I come to hit, I'm basically drag, uh, driving the racket butt at the ball. I'm hitting it. Nothing's changed, guys, from here to here and then through. So I'm locked in. But here's the key. I want you to think about it as a loose lock because now you can start to interpret this if, if cause some people are saying, you know, the, the wrist, it's, it doesn't move. And, and you start to think, well, that means it must, you must be holding the racket tight and it's stiff. No, it's a loose lock. You want to be relaxed as you're doing this. As I'm going to my lag and snap, you want to be relaxed. You want the racket head almost taking over. You know, the more you're holding the racket loosely and the, if you watch Federer who waves the racket around like a magic wand, that's what he's doing. He's coming here and he's here, but he's in a, a loose lock. So as he's driving, it's locked in the position. He's going through, he's released, and then once he comes out as far as he can release, then he's going to start to add some wrist. You want to think about your, your index finger almost as a trigger finger that starts to push itself up against the grip of your racket and turning over. And you'll notice that that's what the pros are doing. As they're hitting, it's locked. It's a loose lock. They're not holding the racket tight to make it lock. Otherwise, if you're very tight, you're not going to get into that lag position and then you're shooting through the shot nice and relaxed. Now another common thing that you're going to see that you're going to know that you're doing it right is when the pros release their lag and snap forehand that as they're coming through, you're going to see the contact like this. The strings may even appear to be slightly facing down. Sometimes it will appear to be parallel. But one thing that's very common is the strings, as you notice, stay facing the ground as it's coming through and they start to turn the racket head, which you might interpret as a snap, but they're, you know, you're using a little more wrist to complete the stroke. And then as they're done, again, the strings are going to stay facing the ground or they may even point sideways to the fence. But you're not going to see the racket head turn up at all. See, once this starts to turn up, this is going to be a deficiency in your stroke and you're going to, maybe you'll make some forehands. Like if I come here and I do that and the ball's gone, then I turn over like this, well that will still go in. But it, it, the timing's going to go off to where eventually you'll start doing this and opening up. So one thing you want to practice coming here and keeping those strings facing forward as you hit that shot, and that's really going to make sure that you get a nice amount of topspin on your forehand. Okay, so now we're getting to the really important part of this video because now we're going to get into some pitfalls that you may be experiencing with this lag and snap forehand because I think there's been parts left out on many of these videos you've watched that I want to make sure we don't leave out. First of all, I've heard the concept, well, you don't really have to think about the lag. It should just happen naturally. And if it's not happening naturally for you, it's not magically going to happen for you just by thinking about relaxing. I disagree with that concept. Uh, especially, we first just have to look at grips. Grips will determine if you have, uh, if it will be natural for you to, to lag or not. For, for example, if you're watching this video and you have a continental grip and uh, kind of like McEnroe hit, you're not going to develop a lag. McEnroe didn't really lag. As I show you some, some shots of him hitting, he didn't lag on his forehand because of the grip. It, it doesn't naturally happen. You come here and you're pretty much done and then you come forward. Connors was around the same grip. He might have been even a little more over towards an Eastern. But again, he didn't. He kind of locked his wrist in here and was coming forward. There was no lag effect. Where this is not unique just to modern tennis, 
people who were having that semi-Western or Western grip, which players did have in the 70s and 80s, if you look at Borg or Velas or Lendl hit a forehand, Since they, they were more over on their grip, it lends itself more as you're getting ready to come forward, as you're, going, you're getting ready to release, you're going to lag naturally, or at least it's going to be easier for you to naturally lag than a McEnroe or a Connors who are coming more straight back here and then straight forward. There is no real lag going on. So um, the grip is going to determine. If you have a semi-Western or Western grip, because of the way you're holding it, I'm here, and now once I start to think about going forward, if I am relaxed, I know the racket tip's got to go back before I can go forward. I just can't go forward and hit the ball. Then it's going to lag and then go through, and it's going to happen naturally for you. But if you tend to be stiff or you tend to have a continental grip, see McEnroe, he was relaxed when he was hitting the forehand. In fact, when I was growing up, I used to kind of hit the ball like McEnroe, and it can be a very relaxing way to hit the shot, okay? But I'm not really lagging back. There might be a slight lag in there, but I'm not really lagging back the way you're gonna see a Rafael Nadal get ready to hit a forehand. Okay, so another thing that might be holding you back, I know a lot of videos that said, all you guys simply do is relax, and then the lag should happen naturally for you. It shouldn't be something you have to think about, and I disagree with, with that. If you have not had this happen for you, it's most likely not gonna happen by simply relaxing. You have to build the muscle memory, and if the muscle memory is ingrained to do something else, just by simply thinking about relaxing, it's probably not going to magically happen for you. There's a lot of players out there, no matter what grip they're holding, that I call they, they hide the wrist from the ball, okay? And you should film yourself to see if you don't feel like you have a natural lag move on your forehand, if you're confused if you have it, go out and video yourself and you might be doing what I call hiding the wrist and that is you're coming here and you see how the wrist is, is hidden from the tennis ball. This is this basically showing your wrist to the tennis ball which will get you in a lag position. This is hiding your wrist from the tennis ball, if you can see that, and people will basically stop right there. Doesn't Sometimes it's because they're holding the racket tight, but doesn't necessarily mean that you're holding the racket super tight. You're, it's just your muscle memory and then, you're, and then you're going forward and you never really get into that lag position. So what I'd like to end today's video with is a 3x power drill that has worked wonders for my students who have struggled with the lag and snap and that is the stinky shoe. So I'll be back to show you that. Plus at the end I'm going to give you a five uh, part free train series called the Modern Tennis Makeover. So let's get to this. Okay so here we are. We've got our stinky shoe tied to the tip of our racket. Okay. This is best if you bring two rackets on the court. I only have one racket today, so we're gonna have to have the magic of the camera work. Show us our third shot. What you wanna do for a while, before you even worry about the 3X part, is just to work and get comfortable with this. And so what this is going to do, this stinky shoe, what I love about this, what's so magical, is it's going to help give you the feeling of lagging your wrist back. So what you wanna do is you're holding the racket, but you're actually holding it loose. It's important to have the other hand, which again, got a lot of genius parts to this, this, this stinky shoe tip, uh, is now it's making you hold onto the racket because if you're not holding on the racket, it's, you, you, it's hard to hold it loose. You kind of feel like you have to hold it tight. But if you're holding it with this dominant hand and being very loose here, it's going to help you get into that pre-stretch or unit turn position. All right. And the next thing that we want to do, once we get to here, we're going to let our helper hand release release and let the, the racket just drop with the weight of the shoe, okay? And also have your legs, it, it, this also forces you to go down, your legs to go down, and then pushes you into that pre-stretch position to where you're relaxed. The weight of the shoe is going to bring it back, especially now you drop the leg, so it's promoting you to use your legs. So now we're using the core, we're using the legs, we're laying it fall out back there 
and the shoe hits the ground and now you can see. Now once you're here, you're then going to start your release, push, release, and try and go through long and you want to be relaxed. You don't want to go through slow the way I did. You want to go at a steady uh, pace and it will help you feel the swing through the, through the ball. It'll help you have develop a natural modern swing path through the ball and then even though I'm coming way out here, lots of times it will have you, you watch a lot of the pros, they'll relax down here. Now again, you're thinking they're having a short swing. It's just that they're so relaxed and the shoe kind of helps you relax to where you'll sometimes finish lower as you do this. So it really does help develop a lot of what you're seeing on TV today. You're here, you're dropping out, you feel the drop out, you come forward and around, okay? We'll show you here from the side and then from the back. Okay, so now as I do this, what I want to do is I want to get more into a flow and I want to do two, so here's a 3x power drill, I want to do two shadow strokes with this, I want it to flow, and then the third one, I want to get my other racket, feel the same feeling, and then hit the ball. We keep doing this over and over again, and your feelings are going to start to mirror each other and you'll start to develop this lag and snap naturally. So I'm here, coming back, laying it drop, feeling that drop, swinging through. Coming here, laying it drop, releasing forward. And now here we come through with our third shot. Again, we're in our pre-stretch. We're gonna drop and snap and come through. All right, now I'm not gonna claim that every tip I make is completely original, but I'm willing to bet you've never seen or heard of the stinky shoe before. I think that might be 100% mine. You can look out there and let me know if you've seen anything else like the stinky shoe, but I'm gonna take credit for being the originator of that. If you like that, please give this video a like because that helps grow the channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Now, I did promise an even cooler, bigger, bonus for you if you stay to the end of the video. So if you're still watching this video, give yourself a hand. And I've got a really cool preview I want to play for you on a five-part series I call a Modern Tennis Makeover. It's five videos that teaches you how to start to really um, learn some of the advanced concepts and, and use your topspin forehand for swinging volleys and topspin lobs and lots of cool shots. Uh, plus, I even got a complete course called Forehand Mastery if you want to take it to the next level. So uh, watch it, sign up, and I'll see you inside the training. Hey, stop there. This is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching, and today, today I want to give you a modern tennis makeover on the forehand. I've got a five-part free training series that is going to cure most of the problems I see from recreational players over the age of 40. Most recreational players lack the desired spin parent control they want because of inferior outdated stroke technique. Funky grips, poor setup, and incorrect swing pass are killing your forehand. Sign up for my free five-part series, Modern Tennis Makeover, and start building a better forehand instantly by watching my first video on core power, which I promise is going to be an eye-opening experience. In video two, watch one of the biggest changes that's happened on the professional tour in the last seven years, used by your favorite pros, Djokovic, Federer, Murray, Nadal, and it's used to dramatically shorten the swing cycle, yet increase racket at speed and power on the ball. In video three, I'm gonna show you how to absolutely murder your approach shot. In video four, I'm gonna show you why not only learning a swing volley is a costly mistake, but I'm also gonna show you how and when to use it. Finally, in video five, I'm gonna show you a disguised tossed and lob that's going to have your opponents walking on eggshells every time they approach the net against you. I promise fun, enjoyment, and improvement or your money back. Guys, it's absolutely free. You have nothing to lose and a modern forehand to gain. So click here to start training instantly and watch the first video on core power right now. We'll see you inside the free training series.